Processing, processing. Yes, I passed. I passed the drone certification basic exam. Welcome to the Wong Reviewer. My name is Will, where I do tech unboxing, tech reviews, and tech tutorials. And in the last video, I did an unboxing of the Mavic Air 2. And, uh, and it's been over a week now, and I still haven't even had a chance to fly this drone. The reason being is in Canada, if you have a drone that's over 250 grams like this one, like the Mavic Air 2 here, you have to have it registered with Transport Canada, as well as pass the drone basic licensing exam. And I, as you saw from the intro, I actually just finished it yesterday. So now I can finally fly this drone today. Well, after I, I set it up, of course, but I'm super excited and super pumped. And I actually had to do a lot of research on how to actually get this registered and write the exam. And in today's video, I'm going to help those of you Canadians who, who bought a drone similar to this or, or over 250 grams. I'm going to cover three topics in this video. One is registering for the government self-service portal so you can actually take the exam and register your drone. So the second topic I'm going to talk about is resources to study for exam um, some, from a different YouTuber that I used, some study habits that I used to do, some comments about the exam and uh, kind of the process of what I did with the exam and how to register for it and take it. And the third topic I'm going to talk about is actually registering the drone itself and how to do that through this, the Government of Canada self-service portal and some of the requirements you have after you register your drone as well. All right, so if you find this video helpful, please remember to give a thumbs up, like the video, and consider subscribing to my channel for similar content. All right, so let's get into it. So the first website that you're going to do is, I'll leave a link in the description, but you have to register with Transport Canada. And uh, you have to get a GC key that gives you access to the Government of Canada self-service portal. So I'm going to click on continue to GC key. And I'm going to hit sign up on the right hand side. Read the terms and conditions. I'm just going to hit accept here. And then here you can create a username. So you have to do the username checklist. So it's be eight in, between 8 and 16 characters, no special characters, and no more than seven digits. I'm going to click continue. I'm going to create a password. So your password must be between 8 and 16 characters, contain at least one uppercase, one lowercase letter and one digit and must not contain three or more consecutive characters from your username. So it's kind of nice on the right hand side, it gives you a checklist to make sure you met the requirements. And then I am going to hit continue. And then also you can have the opportunity to create your own recovery questions, answer and hints. I'm just going to leave a screenshot here of all the drop downs menu of all the different questions you can ask. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole process because I don't want to share that information with the whole world and I'm just going to skip through this process. So now I'm done with the recovery questions, but hit continue. Um, it tells you what your username, um, you've created a GC key. I'm going to hit continue. Next thing to do is account registration. So this is where you, here I'm going to select uh, an individual who owns or flies a drone and then you enter username, password, and all that information. You verify your email address. They're going to send you a code your email so I'm going to enter the code here click continue and next to ask for your mailing address so here I'm just going to quickly fill this out so once you're done that um, you're going to give presented with a couple options register a drone or take the exam here I'm going to take, take, take the exam it's a $10 non-refundable fee so eligibility is you must be 14 years of older to take the small basic exam, which I am. I'm going to hit to choose your exam. So you have two options here. You can choose the small basic exam or the small advanced exam. Uh, as this is my first drone, I'm trying it out. I'm just going to take the basic exam. I'll so select this exam. And then you have to enter all your payment details. It's $10. I'm going to hit continue. And now you are ready to take the exams. It tells you you have 90 minutes to complete the exam. The exam is 35 multiple choice questions and you need a minimum of 65% to pass this exam. So once you're ready, just hit start exam. Here is the knowledge base that you need for your exam. So there's eight sections. 
So section one um, is really from the car. Section two is about the airframe, power plant, propulsion systems. Section three is human factor. Section four is meteorology. Five, navigation. Six, flight operations. Seven, theory of flight. And eight is radio telephony. And if you want to know a little bit more examples about that, you can actually click on the sections and review it. So here it talks about the exam again. Some tells you what the knowledge requirements are, and it tells you what from the car um, that you should actually be studying for your basic exam. So it's kind of nice. At least they kind of filter it down for you. So I'm just going to leave uh, the screen here, just quickly go through it just to show you. Again, I'll leave the link below so that you have an opportunity to review it yourself. Now I want to talk about resources you need to help you pass your drone basic exam. There's a Canadian YouTuber named Don Joyce whose channel is all about drones. He has a great overview video on the Canadian basic drone exam where he goes through the knowledge pass and gives you emphasis on what to study. I highly recommend you review his video and follow his resources before you start studying on your own. There are two documents you really need to focus on to write your basic drone exam. The first document is the Canadian Aviation Regulation. Uh, it's an online resource and I'll leave a link in the description below for it. Um, the car is pretty big and it talks about uh, both aviation and drone and I suggest that you focus on section 9 which is the drone version and also the second document I would recommend is the aeronautical information manual or AIM and there's a PDF version that you could download offline for you to review and again I'll leave a link in the description below. So what I did is I took screenshots of Don's study guide and used it as a foundation to build up my study guide. I would tease out the information from the car or AIM based on the knowledge areas from the screenshots. One of the things that's not in the car aim that shows up in the exam is the theory of flight and fluid dynamics and how weather affect flights. Those two things show up on the exam and it's very important that you actually Google and read up on it prior to taking the exam and even make some notes on it uh, because it is gonna come in handy when you have to apply that knowledge. In total, I spent about six hours um, studying for the exam. Again, using car, aim, googling airframes, googling weather, I mean, all that combined making my notes, it took about six hours to study. And after you know writing out the notes, I felt ready to, to take the test. And in all honesty, after writing the test, I think I probably spent too much time studying on it. So remember, the test is an open book test. That means you can have any resource available to you during the exam process. Um, for myself, I have a desktop, and I'm fortunate enough where I have two monitors, so I have one monitor uh, where I had the exam open and the questions with the time remaining. And then on my second monitor, I had four tabs open to help me kind of coordinate the information I needed to find it quickly for the exam. So I would have one tab had the AIM or Aeronautical Information Manual open. The next one I had the CAR, the Canadian Aviation Regulation, opened up. The next one I had my own internal study notes where I made a bunch of notes to make a reference to. And the last tab is Google. So in terms of the exam itself, um, it's a combination of straight rote knowledge, which means verbatim, you just basically remember what the regulation is and you just match it up to the multiple choice question and that's just a straight memorization. Um, there was probably a quarter of the questions where you have to apply knowledge, um, like theory of flight and how does fluid dynamics affect flight um, on, on airplanes, which is very important. Um, and the quarter of the questions I found were not in the car or aim or the stuff that was talked about in Don's video. And I actually had to Google those questions and really practice your Google skills um, because you are going to require it for uh, at least a quarter of your questions. So when you're writing the test, pace yourself and remember that you can skip through questions and come back to the ones you don't know later on. When I first started writing the test, the first two questions right off the bat, I had to Google. Uh, they were not in my car, they were not in my aim, or not, nothing I studied on. And I actually had to Google those answers. Now, unfortunately, um, I actually spent probably close to 10 minutes on each question Googling. Again, when you're Googling, you've, there's lots of resources coming up. You're trying to make sure you find the right one. You're spending a lot of time in that. And so I would strongly recommend that you just skip through the questions. So after the first two questions, I went through each of the 35 questions and I looked at uh, which ones I knew the answer right away and then just moved on. If I didn't know it, I skipped it, answered the ones I knew, and then skipped the ones that didn't. And then I went back, looking at my time to see how much was left, 
to make sure I wasn't spending too much time going down rabbit holes Googling the answers. And so that's my recommendation is just do the ones you know first, and then depending on how much time you have, you know, spend some time reviewing and um, really can investigating those questions you don't know. I finished the exam in just in over an hour, um, and then I reviewed it again, probably another 10 minutes to review it. So it took about an hour and 10 minutes to write the exam for myself. Um, and I was probably being a little bit overly cautious in that regard, because I really wanted to pass the exam. Congratulations, you passed. There's the pilot certification uh, remote. If you want, you can look at the exam and you can click on view exam certificate. And this is what the exam, uh, what the certificate looks like. So it talks about, you know, your, you have the basic operations, when it was certified and what as a pilot and you are able to do. So uh, for instance, the bomb, right? No flights within 5.6 kilometers, 100 feet within horizontal people. And what I did here was actually save that as a screenshot and save it as a favorite. So if I'm flying my drone, and if ever anyone asks me for it, at least I can show them the certificate on my phone. Uh, if for instance, you, you fail your exam, it does tell you what questions you did wrong and it tells you where to look them up. And I think that's a great way, especially if you fail the exam, to kind of go back and review uh, some of the gaps in your knowledge to take the exam for a second time. And it's kind of nice here. It tells you um, where to look and to, what to review for the next time around. So for instance, for meteorology, I need to review cloud forms and descriptions. Apparently I didn't answer those questions correctly. Um, or theory of flight, uh, for instance, I only answered one of the two cr questions answered correctly. And it's telling me I should look up review quad rotor flight theory. All right, so the next piece I'm gonna talk about is registering your drone. So again, if it's 250 grams, you need to register your drone. This is through the Transport Canada self-service um, link that uh, you that we registered for originally. I'm gonna hit register your drone. Um, we've already have a key, so I'm gonna click continue. I'm gonna sign in with my username and password that was set up earlier in the video. Continue. Here, register drone. It's a $5 non-refundable fee. Uh, here you enter the purchase date. So I'm going to enter, um, I think, last Thursday, June 25th. Click continue. And then it's going to ask you for a maker model. In this case, I have the DJI Mavic Air 2. So I hit DJI. And even though you spell it out, it doesn't actually take you to it. So you have to kind of scroll through it. Um, so I'm just going to keep scrolling here, looking for DJI Mavic Air 2. There it is. And here is where you enter the serial number of the model, the serial number of the drone itself. So I'm going to blank it out, hit continue. Um, and it says who the registered owner is. It's telling me it costs $5. I'm just going to process my payment now. Check out. Uh, I'm going to just flash forward through the payment. And there, here is where it says registration is confirmed. It says uh, you will now need to mark the outside of your drone with the registration number assigned by either applying a label with information or writing the information on a permanent marker. So here, I, I created a label and stuck it on the Mavic Air 2. So here is what the certificate of registration looks like for your drone. So you have the registration number, who is registered to, what the make and model is, so DJI Mavic Air 2, and it tells you what you're able to do. So I can fly near people within 100 feet, and I can fly in control of the airspace. Here I, took a uh, here I took a screenshot of my certificate of registration, so I have it on my phone, and I saved it as a favorite um, picture. So just in case someone does ask me for proof that I am registered pilot and have a registered drone, I can quickly pull this up on my phone and show them on location without having to have a printout with me at all times. All right, so those are three things I wanted to cover off in today's video and I hope you found the video helpful. 
please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, next video I'm going to do is um, flying the drone itself. I've never flown a drone before. This is my first one. I'm very excited. And I'm going to do a video on my first experience flying the Mavic Air 2. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on, you know, setting it up, flying it, and an overall review of it as well. So stay tuned for the third video of the Mavic Air 2 series. All right. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time.